from this to this from this the 222 fifa world cup is qatar to this the world cup with 32 teams is a big big organization which needs also a big country qatar is too small to do that and this video is about how qatar won the world cup bid sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little us does. It's more than just a game. Football stadium and pitches, a sacred ground, watered with tears and blood. A game from humble beginnings that started in schools and playgrounds to now the biggest stadiums with crazy amounts of money buying players such as Neymar for over a quarter of a billion. Which interestingly is a club, Paris Saint-Germain, owned by the Qatar Investment Authority. And we'll be talking about Qatar and its investments in another video. But for now, let's focus on Qatar, the third richest country on the planet. A population of 300,000 and the average citizen earns 86,000 a year. So rich, that there are rumors that Qatar have actually even paid fans an all expense paid trip to sing at the World Cup ceremony. It's mostly flat, barren and dry, which is why only 5% of the land is used for agriculture, but more on the weather later. An awful human rights record with restrictions on civil liberties. But beating all these countries to go on and win the World Cup bid. The 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. Yet there had been some justification as this was the first Arabian country to take on the mantle of the World Cup. So back to that original question, how did Qatar win the World Cup bid? So we've got to look at three things. We've got to look at the World Cup, we've got to look at FIFA, and we've also got to look at Qatar itself. So let's start off with the World Cup. The first international fixture that was ever held was England versus Scotland in 1872 in Glasgow. But it wasn't until 1904 that European nations got together and created FIFA in Paris, uniting the football governing bodies of France, Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden and Switzerland. But it wouldn't be until 1930 that the first World Cup was ever held and that was in Uruguay. It would eventually become the biggest football tournament, the biggest sports tournament and the most viewed sports event in the world. 1.1 billion people watched the final with Croatia versus France in 2018. That's 13% of the world's population watching just this. And as a result, football is going to become less about this and more about this. It's not just about money, it's also about soft power. The ability to get the world to focus on your business or your country to show off the importance of your country. And that gets us a little bit closer as to understanding the reasons and motives as to why Qatar wanted to buy this World Cup. And as a result of this prestige, countries are willing to spend more and more to be able to host this event and also make it the most spectacular event. Let's have a look at this graph with all the spending. Very few sporting events have ever even come close to breaking even. Nonetheless, the idea of being able to support or improve your country. The only one I can think of is the 2012 Olympics in London, which came close, which regenerated East London, and at the moment generates about 30 million a year from tourism and sporting events hosted in the area. So what about FIFA? Well, FIFA's history we've already touched on a little bit. Its aim was to push for international games to take place. But FIFA rapidly grew. It now represents 211 countries and is easily the most powerful sporting organization in the world, with six major regions, also known as confederations, UEFA, CAFA, AFC, OFC, Common Bowl, and CONCAFA. All FIFA tournaments generate revenue from sponsorship. In 2018, FIFA had revenues of over 4.6 billion, ending the 2015-18 cycle with a net positive of 1.2 billion and had cash reserves of 2.7 billion. It's safe to say that FIFA is not short of revenue and has plenty in reserve. 
The total compensation for a management committee in 2011 was 30 million for 35 people. The president, Seb Blatter, the only full-time person on the committee, earned approximately 2 million Swiss francs, 1.2 million in a salary, and the rest in bonuses. Where is my security? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go, Seb. That's it. In 2014, the Sunday Times claimed the members of the committee had their salaries doubled from 100,000 to 200,000 during the year. The report also said leaked documents had indicated 4.4 million in secret bonuses had been paid to the committee members following the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. These allegations led to the indictments of nine high-ranking FIFA officials and five corporate executives by the US Department of Justice on charges including ra of racketeering wire fraud, and money laundering conspiracies spanning two decades. It's safe to say there is a history with corruption and deception within FIFA, already dating back before Qatar. So on that note, let's talk about Qatar. Qatar, for most of its history, was lived in by nomadic tribes and fishing villages, and its biggest industry was pearl diving. The British appeared in 1916, discovered oil, and made Qatar a British protectorate until 1971, when the British left. But the oil remained, and Qatar was run by one family and as a constitutional monarchy. The vast oil reserves were backed up further with gas, and in fact the largest gas field on the planet allowed Qatar to boom, becoming an international energy hub. And because the country is so small, it's about the size, a third of the size of Switzerland, with a population of only 300,000, you can start to see how everything's been so wealthy and how I mentioned earlier that the average citizen is on $86,000 a year. But the question then is, how do you make the most out of all this wealth? You need foreign labor. 95% of the people living in Qatar are foreign laborers. Two, you need or want international recognition. So how do you do that? Putting on international spectacles definitely helps. And one of the biggest is obviously the World Cup. And what do FIFA like and want? Money. What do Qatar want? The World Cup. So it's a simple exchange. Qatar has the money, FIFA have the goods, and these are the gatekeepers. We've got an idea, we think it's money, but can we prove it? We know 14 of the members voted for Qatar, and we do know why some of them voted for Qatar. If you look at the operational risk assessment done by FIFA, it shows that Qatar was no match for the US. But you could argue that the US has done the World Cup before and Qatar hasn't, and neither has it been done in the Middle East. But the report still showed there were massive issues. Super hot weather. The inspection team for evaluating who would host the tournament said that Qatar was high risk due to its weather. FIFA President Seb Blatter initially rejected the criticism, but in September 2013 said that the FIFA Executive Committee would evaluate the feasibility of a winter event instead of a summer one. And when I say winter, I just want to say it can only be uh, November, December, and in no way January, February. Well, obviously yeah. they're so important that we'll have to change when we play our tournament. It's so vital that they have our tournament that belongs to the world, and I think I'm a world person, aren't I? I come from England. So we'll just change everything because your weather's really hot. Because we can't play it when we should do. Brilliant. There's no widespread football infrastructure. You need to show you are a country that loves football. And there's no history of Qatar and football. Or, well, there is. In 2004, a Brazilian trio of Elton, Dede and Leandro, none of whom had ever played in or have any other connections to Qatar, were approached to help Qatar qualify for the 2006 FIFA World Cup. FIFA blocked the moves and as a result tightened eligibility requirements for national teams. There's not even a large population to spread the joy of football to. Well, daar te laten ontwikkelen en beter te laten ontwikkelen en dat doe je door uh, een toernooi te organiseren in dat land. Now, that is all bullshit. Having a population of 300,000 doesn't justify being able to host the world's largest sporting event. And in the build-up, there have been so many issues. Qatar claimed that the cup would be the most inclusive ever, unless you're Jewish, LGBTQ+, a woman, or a migrant worker. We open everything to everybody, and I think there shall not be any discrimination against uh, any uh, human beings. Jewish fans, 
It was reported that Qatar went back on its word to provide kosher food and public Jewish prayer services at the 2022 World Cup, banning both activities. Reports have also come out recently that people announcing Israeli heritage have been removed from restaurants. And interestingly, I've seen very little coverage of this taking place in the UK. LGBTQ+. <laughs> With homosexuality banned, FIFA president Seb Blatter initially said, I would say then that they should refrain from any sexual activities. Further to this, Qatari Article 296 says adultery is punishable to up to three years in prison. Article 290 says that anyone who does obscene acts, sings immoral things, or performs obscene acts can be imprisoned for up to six months or given a $3,000 fine. <laughs> Which is a really shocking thing to have as an article. Have they not seen England fans? <laughs> On several occasions, the Qatari organizers have promised to comply with FIFA rules on promoting tolerance, including LGBTQ plus issues. Yet reports have come out saying that four transgender women and a gay man have been beaten in police custody. On December 8th, 2020, Qatar announced that rainbow flags will be allowed in stadiums at the 2022 World Cup. The World Cup chief executive said, when it comes to the rainbow flags in the stadiums, FIFA have their own guidelines. They have their rules and regulations. Whatever they may be, we will respect them. And there were several friends and colleagues of ours who'd been, uh, who'd had their hats removed and confiscated, or indeed in a couple of cases thrown in the bin, which is pretty insulting. An ambassador was interviewed by a German journalist. This went against what FIFA and the Qatar government had stated. Everybody, they will accept they come in here, but they will accept, they have to accept our rules here. Haram. You know haram what's meaning? Yes, haram. Yeah, 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 it's haram. So he will say for me, why are you doing it? But do you think gay is haram? It's haram. Because why is haram? I am not big, one big Muslim, but it's haram, why? Because of damage in the mind. Despite all those reassurances, since then rainbow flags and clothing with a rainbow have been banned from stadium. Should be noted that according to multiple Middle Eastern religions, that rainbow was a positive sign from God after the floods women's rights. Discrimination against women has also been criticized. Women in Qatar must obtain permission from their male guardians to marry, travel abroad, study abroad, work in government, receive some forms of reproductive health care, and act as the primary guardian of children, even if they are divorced. If the father dies and there's no male relative to take over, the government has to look after the kid. Can you imagine it being one of these three having to look after your kid? workers. As stated earlier, the Qatari population is only 300,000. The rest is made up of immigrant workers and according to multiple sources, the death toll on building the stadiums has reached 6,500. This tournament is about bringing people together, not graveyards for stadiums and tombstones for goalposts. This was best put by Louis van Gaal. That is all bullshit. Yet, with all of what I've just said, just before the World Cup, the head of FIFA, Infantino, gave a frankly bizarre hour-long address to the media defending hosting the tournament in Qatar. Today I feel uh, Qatari. Today I feel uh, gay. Today I feel disabled. Today I feel uh, a migrant worker. And this was taught by claiming he understood how it felt to be discriminated against because he is ginger. As a child at school, I was bullied because I had uh, red hair. How he can compare being ginger to being disabled or coming out to your parents that you're gay? I mean, you can't re... I mean, <laughs> you're ginger, it's really clear. Or the fact that he might be working in a slave labor camp. It feels very much like the corruption is still there. On a further strange note, David Beckham was reportedly offered £150 million to be the face of the Qatar World Cup. Just have a listen to what he loves about Qatar. I've been coming here for quite a few years and I've seen 
a real football culture here. I think it's going to be great for the fans. It's been pretty incredible. It's set up perfectly. The facilities is incredible. Qatar is ready for this World Cup. I love riding. I love to go to fish market. I love a bike community. I love to go to spice market. I love being in the middle of nowhere and talking and eating and this is perfection for me. So this is Mohammed bin Harman, a member of the FIFA committee who clearly voted for Qatar. He's from Qatar, but as you'll see, he's been linked to so many other members being caught for being bribed. Starting with Jack Warner, leaked emails and bank records in the Sunday Times revealed that bin Harman had directly deposited $450,000 into Jack Warner's account. Overall, his family were paid almost two million from a firm linked to Qatar's successful campaign. Next is Chuck Blazer. In May 2011, he initiated an investigation into Mohammed bin Haman and FIFA Vice President Jack Warner. The investigation led to FIFA suspending Warner and bin Haman from all soccer activities, pending the outcome of FIFA's own investigation and procedures. Blazer began working undercover for the FBI in December 2011. On the 9th of July 2015, Blazer received a lifetime ban from FIFA from all soccer related activity. So we can assume Blazer also voted for Qatar. Solguero pleaded guilty in 2016 to multiple corruption charges after admitting to accepting a bribe for the 2018 World Cup. Although that's not for the 2022, it's starting to look likely that the entire team had been corrupted. The next is Commonball. The US Department of Justice has become involved and it released an unsealed indictment against all three claiming they'd received bribes for votes. In 2011, a British reporter told the Brazilian Senate Committee that Teixeira may have amassed 9.5 million in bribes. And the most outrageous of all the claims was about Nicholas Leots, who had been accused of requesting an honorary knighthood in reward for supporting a World Cup bid for England. It was also later revealed in email exchanges involving its aid, Leots would consider visiting England if the FA Cup, the oldest football competition in the world, were named after him. Next, CAIF. A year before the vote, the African Confederation were having an annual meeting in Angola paid for by the Qatar bid team. You could argue nothing wrong with that. According to the translator at the meeting though, $1.5 million was offered to each of the attendees. A year later, the translator changed her story and took back the statement. Another year later, she met with FBI and claimed that she'd been pressured into changing her story. But interestingly, Adamu was disqualified from voting due to the corruption charges and also applied to the head of the OFC, who was also removed from voting. So we can discount those two. We know there's 14, we'll discount those two, but the other two Hmm, well, I'm thinking the whistleblower, I'm going to side with them if it's a choice, but obviously it's down to yourselves. Now, the Asian Federation. We have this guy, banned in 2015 for five years for forgery and falsification. In 2011, evidence was given to the British Parliament that he had demanded the TV rights to a friendly between England and the Thai national team in return for voting for England to host the 2018 World Cup. So it's now looking likely that this person is corruptible. And interestingly, there's another connection between Thailand and Qatar, who were renegotiating an energy deal. Makudi happened to be at the meeting. And we know this because of leaked emails between Makudi and the chairman of Qatar Petroleum, which clearly infer a deal for a vote in exchange for a cheaper gas price. Now then, there's an even more subtle side to this. Everyone denies any connection to the vote, so let's be clear on that. However, Zakaritis sold land to Qatar a year after the vote for £27 million, way above the asking price. Mikhail de Hodge's son was given a job in Qatar, and then there is Platini, who had said that he was going to vote for the USA. A week before the vote, he was invited to meet with President Sarkozy of France. And there was also the Prime Minister of Qatar, and now Emre, wasn't at the time, of Qatar, Tamid bin Hamad. 
According to the sources at the meeting, Sarkozy demanded that Platini vote for Qatar. Despite the allegations, there are some interesting events that's happened soon after. Paris Saint-Germain, just so happens to be Sarkozy's favorite club, got bought by Qatar. And like I said at the beginning, they bought the most expensive football player on the planet, Neymar. Qatar buys 50 planes from Airbus, which is about 18 to 20 billion dollars being invested into France's Airbus. And finally, Platini admitted he had voted for Qatar. Overall, from all of this, we are looking at somewhere in the region of 13 votes going towards Qatar. But we know there were 14, so there's always an element of questioning going on since then. Since then, Seb Blatter has also been removed from office, as well as Platini. In the end, all this does is tell us that football is now for soft power. It's not for the masses. It's not for the working classes. There was even an interesting piece saying that drinking would be allowed in certain areas in Qatar, then it's been completely banned, except for in executive offices in the stadia. As I said at the start, Joga Bonita, it's the beautiful game, but FIFA have made it ugly. And in the words of Russell Howard, I really like football to come home, but I really want FIFA to fuck off. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for all your support. It all helps this channel grow and go. I hope you enjoyed this movie. There are other movies available in my channel. Please go check them out. All your support, whether it's a like or a subscribe or a share, it's free. It helps the channel keep on going. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.